ಅಮಾನ್ ಅವರೊಳಗೆ अभी अनम्यूट कर दिया
A very good afternoon to one and all. And uh, I welcome you all in this uh, session two of day two. Uh, we will be just waiting for a couple of minutes so that uh, other participants also join us. So just wait for two minutes and then we will be directly starting. A very good, good afternoon to one and all. I, on behalf of Sharda University and School of Engineering and Technology, I, Sumandata, welcome you all in this uh, session two of day two. In this session, we will be having two presentations. One will be on developing smart economies, which will be presented by Dr. O.P. Nangia. And there will be another one, which is on introduction to photovoltaics and renewable energy the photovoltaics and applied market prospects technology experiences by Dr. Peter uh, Path. Uh, so uh, we will be starting with the, the first one, which is uh, will be by Dr. O.P. Nangya. And uh, both, these ex uh, the, both these speakers are uh, experts in their respective fields. So I am hopeful I'm hopeful that this, these two sessions will definitely will give us something to take with us and uh, they will be sharing their experience of their respective fields with us. Uh, so I will be starting with uh, Dr. O.P. Nangya, uh, who has a man which has, uh, who has passion for promotion of green power generation for energy security and preventing global warming. At present, Dr. P. Nangya is associated as Senior Consultant in Renewable Source Energy Technologies, Director Nivara Solar, uh, Solar Solutions Private Limited. And he is also a national level uh, monitor for, uh, for MNRE. Formerly, Dr. Om, uh, Dr. Om has worked with BHEL, New Delhi, Bangalore, Gurgaon, Hyderabad, and, and has headed BHEL Gurgaon. He has also served DRDO and IIT Delhi. Dr. Om Rishi has received uh, his uh, MTech in solid, state, uh, in solid state physics from IIT Delhi and PhD from silicon materials from IIT Delhi again. Uh, he has over 40 years of experience in the field of silicon materials and solar, photovoltaic and thermal, uh, both in the R&D as well as in the production. 
his consultancy association is there is a long list but i will just try to name few it is with mnre uh, pfcl dhel ntpc and many more uh, he has delivered management as well as technical lectures at numerous number of places like iit delhi ima dst uh, and many many more in his list uh, so uh, like he is having such a wa vast experience uh, so uh, pro his uh, profession he has a membership for professional bodies like he's a senior member ieee usa and he has a life membership for semiconductor society uh, uh, with this, uh, he is also having uh, around 100 plus publications to his credit. He has traveled a lot to US, Germany, UK, France, uh, and um, uh, many more places. And uh, I think that the today's session, which he will be presenting, will definitely be an eye opener for all of us. And he will be sharing his such he's having such a long experience and definitely we are going to be benefited out of it. Uh, now over to uh, Dr. Om Nangya. So you can start with your session. Hello. Hello. Am sir. I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, first of all, I am really grateful for, for the kind words and a good introduction. Thanks. thanks. Mitro, Pranam. My name is Om Nangiya. Good afternoon and welcome to all faculty, speakers, and participants in this customized energy theme webinar, Role of Energy Management in Smart City under the Faculty Development Program. At the outset, congrats to the Sharda University for choosing a very, very appropriate topic and grateful thanks to VC Sahib, deans, HODs for the kind invitation. Big appreciation for School of Engineering and Technology and the coordinators, Professor Jaiswal and his colleagues for the hard work to organize it. Uh, let me just tell you briefly that uh, this is my third interaction with Sharda University. Way back in 209 and 10, I had visited Actually, you have a very beautiful and very impressive campus. I had visited for, a, for an appointment for a director's post, and but for destiny, I didn't get. And second time, I visited as a consultant for installation of solar systems on the rooftops. And this is my third interaction as a, a webinar speaker. I feel highly proud and humbled to talk to the highly elite and learned fraternity of the reputed Sharda University. I believe the webinar topic which I have chosen, challenges and opportunities for solar green power in developing smart economies will be quite relevant. India has an important task to plan and execute way forward approach with new policies and perspectives in renewable solar energy vis-a-vis -vis smart city, cities. We all also have the responsibility to support government to unlock the great potential for smart city development. Recently, COVID-19 has brought an added challenge to India and the world, but opportunities are galore. It brings a golden opportunity to transform the world for a better tomorrow. We have to smartly grab the opportunity knocking at our door. I hope you probably will gain a good amount of knowledge on the advances in supply chain of silicon semiconductor strategic material for the smart cities. My presentation PPT is a comprehensive one and includes new technologies, strategies, new perspective for smart cities and some silicon samples, which are basically the raw material for solar photovoltaic. So I'll now start my presentation. Thank you. Thank you.
Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your application is also visible and you are audible also. Now, this is a very, uh, very basic uh, photograph. You will be surprised that why I have put this here. Uh, this is a kind of happiness when anybody who gets from the divine source like sun, uh, some solar energy. So this small children picture depicts what kind of happiness one can get when sun is involved. Now this is a uh, role of energy management in smart city. Uh, I think I'm sure Sharda University is very famous and uh, in believing the uh, in the knowledge and wisdom given by Goddess Saraswati. So we pray to Goddess for bestowing more and more knowledge to all the participants and the faculty. This is the topic of my webinar, Challenges and Opportunities for Solar Green Power in Developing Smart Economies. Basically, I will be dwelling on various topics and uh, the most uh, relevant topic in my talk will be on the uh, crystalline silicon photovoltaic technology, which is the workhorse and commercially mature technology and being utilized all over the world in very, very large numbers. So the coverage of my talk will be manufacturing PV supply chain, make in India, adopting new technologies and advanced R&D, define new strategies and potential strengths in our country, and the funding and stimulus package which government is providing to the industry for building new industries. Some of the basic information in this presentation on solar, silicon PV technology has been included for those participants who may be less aware of the subject. However, for the experts who are attending the webinar, this information may be known, please excuse. This is just a picture which shows for achieving anything, we should have patience and perseverance because dreams are renewable and no matter what our age is. So we must have perseverance to achieve our goals. Basically, this is a slide which gives a preamble of my webinar. The gist of the whole, this slide I have written, I'll be covering PV technology status, focus on strategies, roadmap, how we should you know, pursue the smart city project, India's potential strengths for smart cities, and then new perspective, finance, FDIs, and India as a major hub. So these are the uh, various topics which I'll be covering. And I believe this recording of this webinar, if it is being done, and if it is allowed, it can be seen by the participants subsequently also. In yes. case they want yeah. to go through the details. It is available, sir. It is live. Okay, that will be done on, uh, on YouTube also. Yeah, that will be very nice. That will help participants to see any, any particular slide or any other detail which I will be covering. So it will be really nice. Thank you. Now, this is a, just as a depiction of the period what we are undergoing, COVID, the monster. But I'm sure there is a savior also. In place of COVID, we should call Govin. And Govin, small Govin is also there. So we shouldn't worry, we should not fear. And all things will be taken care by our Lord Krishna Govin. He is the savior. Now, post COVID-19 impact and advantages. Basically, this COVID has given a big you know, kind of shock. The whole solar sector is crippled. Not only solar sector, all sectors of industry and economy are crippled and the imports have been disrupted and prolonged industrial shutdowns are there. And productivity has been halted, business has been shrinkage, negative growth and loss in revenue. These are the various impacts which COVID-19 has given us. But advantages are also there. This is not like a natural disaster, like tsunami or earthquake. Our equipments, our factories, our facilities are all standing. Our shops, our workshops are there. And our trained and motivated human resource are available. 
and land, power, water, and major infrastructure is available. So this is a kind of advantage. Rather, there is no disadvantage as we normally see during earthquake or tsunamis or any kind of other natural disaster. And the silver lining is we have the opportunity to establish new industries with various foreign companies who are wanting to shift to India and set up their shops here. And this is a kind of silver lining for us. And India, a new India can come up. This is a very common picture. All of you might have seen this is fossil fuel based, you know, this power plant, which emits so much of harmful greenhouse gases. And uh, they are polluting all over the world. It is a big topic and all countries are putting a lot of money on research and by using green uh, uh, solar power and other renewable energy to uh, get rid of this GHG gases. Now, smart city mission has been taken as a very major mission by government of India for environment transformation. Basically, in the first phase, government of India has selected uh, 20 cities and the second phase, I believe, has around 100 cities. And so further also, new uh, uh, mission, new phases will come where all over the country, many more cities will be covered. And basically, idea is to, you know, use green energy in the uh, projects which we will be taking up for so smart city mission. This is just a glimpse of, uh, you know, tomorrow's smart economy, how India can be. I'm so nice and beautiful uh, everywhere, you know, green energy, wind energy, solar energy, greenery. So this is what our children can hope for. Now, the renewable energy and solar energy has unlimited potential and the utilization for smart cities are enormous. I mean, this is a long list and if I want, I can list another 10 or 20 applications where we can make use of in the uh, development of smart cities. Large ground grid power stations, industrial and commercial rooftops, schools, institutions, then solar and wind storage hybrid. Also, we can use fuel cells. We can use floating solar plants over rivers and ponds, sea water desalination, and for agriculture and horticulture requirement, for transportation, electric vehicles, railways, metros, telecom towers, solar water heating systems. There's a long list. And then there are others also, like micro and mini grids for rural areas, health clinics can be, wellness centers can be run by a solar power, schools can be run for armed forces and space satellites also, it is very useful. And then emergency shelters and refugee encampments and for security needs. So this is not the complete list. There can be another 20 applications which are usable for uh, smart cities. Now, this is just an example of a solar carport. Basically, uh, on any uh, you know, parking lot, we can install uh, solar panels and we get the benefit of getting energy as well as the shade for the cars in the parking lot. This is a solar powered desalination system. See, we can have, because there is going to be a big shortage of water. So we have to adopt this desalination system for purifying the water from sea. And solar power is one of the useful application for desalination of the sea water. Now, development of smart cities, a government of India mission. Basically, it has some points, but I will just tell you in the first, uh, this thing, the gist of the whole slide, the initiative for <clears throat> driving economic growth, and then improving quality of life, harnessing technology to enhance our GDP. The smart cities will give a lot of uh, you know, relief to government also, when as, as far as the economy is concerned, and then comprehensive development of physical, institutional, social, and economic. All these will be enhanced. And as I said, in phase one, 20 number of smart cities have been enlisted and based on the experience 100 more 
cities will be developed. Now, this is the energy transition. See, presently for the last 100 years or more, we are working with energy drawn from fossil fuels. And now we are switching over to renewables in the last 10 years. Basically, from 2008 onward, Government of India has started the National Solar Mission. And of course, wind power was being utilized earlier. And since solar is more predominant, availability is there all over the country as compared to wind. So this transition from fossil fuel to renewable is going to be very challenging because a large number of uh, you know, power plants on coal-based or oil-based or gas-based are available and new ones are also being set up. But since coal availability is going to be depleted in the next two decades, and also coal is also becoming very costly proposition. And thirdly, the global warming effect due to the power from coal-based power plants is also being discussed very seriously. So this changeover from fossil fuel to renewable energy for developing smart economies will, be, will play a very dominant and vital role. So this changeover has to be accepted by government and by the developers, by the industries, and by the citizens. This will be a very major energy transition in going to take place in the next 30 to 40 years. Because unless and until we can make uh, use of solar power for running all our infrastructure, till that time, the power from the coal-based and oil-based and gas-based power plants will continue. Now, what's the way out? As we are finding a lot of challenges are there. Seven point basic approach. We must involve experts. There should be right thinking, right knowledge, minute planning, and most important, timely execution for smart cities mission. See, many times you would have seen projects get planned, but the executions are get, they get delayed and the whole budget goes haywire. And we are not able to control the total uh, expenditure and the benefit of that project also gets delayed. Then rise to the occasion, always search for this team of people who will be involved should search for optimum and sustainable solution, not short term solutions. And then we should follow whatever government plans and our PM is also very visionary. So we are lucky to have this uh, government which is planning in a very big way. Then we should have long-term vision and mitigating challenges and creating opportunities. See, opportunities get created when we try to mitigate challenges. So on a long-term basis, you should view this rather than on short-term basis because India is a very vast country and we have to take care of so many sectors which involve the use of energy. And then the whole mission team should focus very dedicatedly. We should not lose momentum because this uh, smart city mission is not a very one-time affair. It is going to last for another 20 to 30, 40 years. And we must pledge, all of us have the responsibility to pledge to contribute positively with three Js, with Josh, Jazba, and Junoon. And finally, we should not defy laws of nature. This is what we are experiencing with COVID, that the more we defy laws of nature, we get challenged by nature. Rather, we should be indebted to nature. So this is very, very important. See this, how beautiful this uh, seminar hall or a conference hall looks like, a natural conference hall. You would have not seen this kind of uh, you know, session, seminar, or symposium going on under a very shady tree. This is what is required. Instead of sitting in large conference hall with ACs and all that, this kind of eco-friendly environment with shrinking carbon footprints. Because we have troubled Mother Earth in a very big way. We have given a lot of pain by affecting the nature, by destroying the nature, and with environmental pollution. So this is what is a kind of a kind, uh, you know, uh, picture which shows 
this is what we should have in our country all everywhere eco friendly environment now this this is atam self reliant uh, india program atam nirbhar bharat abhiyan this is also government of india's and in this slide i have tried to given a give a gist in the first line the national solar mission in 2009 at that time there was hardly any installation or capacity of solar now in 2019 10 years later we are having 37 gigawatt of solar capacity and at in 2009 the rate of solar was about 18 rupees per unit now you would imagine the rate has come down to 2 rupees 50 paisa per unit which is equivalent to the uh, fossil fuel power uh, electricity which we get from the coal based power plant then government is giving lot of incentives stimulus package easy financing and banks have been given instructions to fund this solar and renew renewable energy project so this is the gist of what i have covered in this particular slide this is a very beautiful picture our sun god this is the only god in india who is visible all other gods are there and we have a feeling and we realize the god but this god is very prominent and visible and this is giving the uh, uh, you know help and kind of fuel free fuel to the mankind 5000 trillion kilowatt hour solar radiation incident in a year over india so this fuel is totally free compared to the fossil fuel power plant where we have to buy we have to import we have to spend lot of foreign exchange and and that also creates lot of pollution this fuel is eco friendly and eternal it is going to last for eternal uh, years so we must pray and god uh, sun god to continue to help us now this is first i have shown you the atam nirbhar bharat abhiyan program this is make in india preparation in this slide i have given you a kind of gist impediment for india's growth basically at present cheap large solar imports from china as far as solar activity is concerned india is fully dependent on china to the extent of 90% of the components of solar are being imported and in india we are not fully geared up to manufacture those components that's why now indian government is making preparation to have atam nirbhar bharat abhiyan now we will be starting basic custom duty on the import from china and some components can still come because setting up of industries in india will take quite a number of years so partly we can stop the imports and simultaneously take up establishment of the uh, in house industries in india under the make in india program now this is a kind of strategic solar see solar has a use of silicon material and it is a very strategic material and all the countries in the world are trying to grab a share of this material but somehow china has taken a lead and china has been supplying to all over the world this silicon material for the and its components for the uh, development of solar systems so in this slide Uh, for developing smart economies we must use the in house setups for using in smart cities various applications solar energy which can give lot of benefits then we india can become a big power hub for solar as already india has taken a lead and is a leader of the international solar alliance where 100 odd countries are member so india is being taken as a leader for a solar uh, you know industry and solar energy then we can have uh, you know uh, scz zones and where we can do export to various countries which are not developed but all this has to be done unless and until we have a top class quality control on our products unless we are able to produce top quality material then only we will be able to market those products now this is a picture of solar wind renewable park 
where you will see both wind energy and solar energy systems are performing simultaneously and they have a common transmission line so this is the latest trend instead of having a lone solar plant and a lone uh, wind plant we can have a hybrid solar plant this is the latest policy of government of india mnre then in addition to that the another trend which is happening is the battery storage system you know large utility scale solar plants are operating during day time as long as sun is there but what is happening if night comes or maybe for export of that power to the other country we can use this battery storage so these battery storage systems are becoming very popular along with uh, solar or wind uh, power plants and this is a utility scale solar plant where hundreds of megawatts of power is being generated now this is a, a kind of uh, opportunity what i am trying to show in india there is a department of science and technology which has launched a storage energy storage innovation challenge they are inviting applications from universities and from scientists who can develop economically and our energy storage solutions integrated with appropriate renewable energy source which can be solar or which can be wind or which can be any other source of a renewable energy so they are asking for applications people can submit their proposal till 31st october and lot of grants and uh, benefits will be given and this storage application can be based on lithium ion batteries ultra capacitors lead acid batteries and flow batteries so this is just i thought let me since it's a big university with so many students and faculty this kind of project can be uh, application can be put up this is a very beautiful picture the uh, solar pv mitigates global warming it is a well known phenomena and otherwise there is a havoc which global warming is creating for the mankind and ecology now make in india as far as is concerned towards self reliance india has a target of our ministry basically india is the only country where we have a, a separate ministry for renewable energy it's a very big achievement and very important point so mnre has a target of capacity of 175 gigawatt by 2022 out of that 100 gigawatt will be solar based and by 2030 450 gigawatt renewable energy will be installed this is the latest target which our prime minister has given to mnre now there are various companies in india like adani green who have got big projects for manufacturing as well as for setting up of solar power plant now government of india is giving incentives to those companies who can have in house man manufacturing of uh, many components of the solar supply chain as i will be showing you and then they will get uh, very easily the uh, setting up of the uh, solar power plants under their new schemes where they get a good rate of solar electricity and other companies which you might be knowing ntpc tata power jupiter solar wari vikram bhl sterling and wilson lnt acme many companies are there but their role is limited now government of india wants their role to be extended further and presently in india we are only producing mostly solar modules and setting up solar power plants but what is the need further i will explain to you now as i said crystalline silicon is the most important material raw material for solar pv photovoltaics it's a robust and reliable proven matured upgradable technology this technology is there for the last i am sure 30 40 years and it will continue to grow because lot of r&d is going on in this area and to reduce the cost of manufacturing and to increase the efficiency in the solar cells and modules by using crystalline silicon 
so this technology will continue was there in the last 30 40 years see when i was doing my research in iit delhi way back in 1969 i was working on small size of silicon solar cells with efficiencies of 3 to 4% that 1 cm solar cell was available at a very high cost availability of material but now we are using 200 mm big dia silicon wafers and the cost has also come down very drastically and efficiencies we are touching is of the order of 20 to 22% from crystalline silicon photovoltaic solar cells so it's a very mature technology and in this uh, you know smart city uh, projects the use of solar pv will be in a big way and we have to utilize the uh, you know crystalline silicon based solar cells in a very big way because it is a most matured and very cost competitive competitive technology and as i said we are importing lot of material from china and there is a need for setting up of industries of the similar kind in india and also we can join hand with the giants in the world who are willing to come out of china and set up their industries in india or any other country so this is a golden opportunity for us after the covid 19 disappears now this is a supply chain of solar industry basically we start with value material value material is polysilicon material i'll just show you a sample of that this is a polysilicon material which is made from you will not believe which is made from sand this is a sand river sand and out of this river sand we convert this into high purity polysilicon material then we have you know out of this uh, uh, value material polysilicon we make ingots polycrystalline silicon in god or monocrystalline silicon in gods if you see the top line then we make wafers from in god from wafers we make cells and then solar modules are made out of these cells similarly we have a lower uh, chain where we use polycrystalline silicon in god polycrystalline wafer polycrystalline cells and modules and then the systems are made for power plant power generation now as i said polysilicon is the basic input material for solar pv raw material and it is basically purified from polysilicon for polysilicon manufacturing by using sand which is quartz and silicon dioxide and silane gas so it's a chemical process there are two big companies siemens and rec who are manufacturing who have developed the technology know how for conversion of sand into uh, polycrystalline material this is a flow diagram is a big chemical industry where we the input is uh, sand and the output is semiconductor grade silicon material so it's a very you know uh, complicated complex uh, chemical reactions where use of silane is you made then tricolor chlorosilane is made and through uh, fluidized bed reactions we convert sand into uh, technical grade silicon and then it is further purified and refined into semiconductor grade silicon which is basically the raw material for uh, solar pv modules this is again a block diagram we start with quartz then metallurgical grade silicon polycrystalline comes out of that then single crystal and then wafer is made basically uh, there are two technologies as i said and any of these technologies so all these uh, all these industries are available in the world but china has set up large you know number of industries with the, so much of uh, you know the production levels that no other country is able to achieve that this is the picture of high purity polysilicon chunks as i was showing you this is the starting material for solar industry this is being 
this is not being imported because the next step of this also we are not having the facilities so this is available abroad at a very cost costly rate and then this is converted into uh, you know kind of ingots i have shown you two pictures one is the polysilicon which is very very uh, you know important material and now it is becoming a very you know sought after and whereas the other material for power generation is this coal these are the coal chunks these are the coal chunks see both of these materials look alike but there is a lot of difference one gives out a, a power uh, the generation of power is done with lot of pollution and environment gets affected other is a very you know uh, eco friendly material and gives power which is eco benign so this silicon material is the raw material and we have to make use of it for for uh, making use in solar photovoltaic by growing crystals crystals are basically homogeneous structure solid material and these crystals can be also uh, you know uh, made into ingots there are two techniques one is the cz technique where we use where we grow crystals and we get mono crystalline silicon crystals of long rods and in the other ingot uh, material we use the casting method where we don't grow crystals and we make only the casts so this is not a mono crystalline it is called a multi crystalline there is another technique of making crystals silicon crystals which is called float zone method out of this we make crystals and cut into wafers which are very high efficiency and they are used for ic's and other semiconductor application devices application for solar pv application the cz technique and ingot casting method are good enough this is a cast multi crystalline silicon cast which is slightly cheaper than the silicon crystal which is grown in a furnace this is that silicon cz crystal furnace which is used for growing crystals from polycrystalline material which i have shown you this material is put in a crucible and melted in a 1400 degree temperature and with the help of a silicon seed there is a seed which i will show you this is a seed this seed is used for growing crystal slowly at a very you know known small rate the pulling is done and then this seed is a mono crystalline seed on this mono crystalline seed whatever melt gets solidified they that also takes the shape of the mono crystalline structure the the randomness of the atom is very much there uh, and the crystal becomes mono crystalline silicon whereas in the uh, multi crystalline we just freeze the silicon melt in a container and then we make a cast which is not a crystal as i have shown you in the previous slide so this is the crystal at 1420 degree centigrade the crystal is being grown see that crystal mono crystal this is the uh, you know inside schematic of the crystal growth pulling furnace it has you know uh, 14 uh, carbon uh, you know used for carbon heaters used for uh, generating that kind of temperature then there is a quartz crucible on in which polycrystalline high purity which we have drawn from sand is used and that is melted then with the help of a seed it is pulled up this is since it is a university and uh, faculties there are a lot of students so it is interesting to know from where we start and we know about the solar pv but what are the starting points what are the supply chain materials how we get polysilicon and how we make crystals or ingots that is quite interesting to know also this is the picture of a crystal being grown in a inside a furnace now we are as i said we are able to grow big large dia 200 to 250 mm dia and earlier we were working on one 
centimeter dia crystal wafers and now the advancement has gone so much that we are able to grow 250 mm dia uh, you know crystals this is the picture of you no know, crystals actually when we grow in this furnace long rods 1 meter long rod of 200 mm dia crystals are grown because these crystals are then cut into wafers as i will show you these are the wafers multi and mono which are cut thin wafers are cut from the crystals and those wafers are then used for making cells this is the picture of multi this multi silicon wafer and mono silicon wafer cells so these cells are basically the starting material which we start in india some industries have the facility of making uh, you know solar cells they have uh, you know the setup but not very large setup of making cells and then finally we are making most of the industries in india are making from cells to modules so what i was trying to tell you in the other previous supply chain material nothing is available in india neither polycrystalline polycrystalline material uh, manufacturing nor uh, in god or crystal manufacturing nor uh, you know making of wafers so all these things are required to be set up in india when we go for large production of uh, solar photovoltaic system which will be useful for smart cities this is a kind of some pictures of the monocrystalline silicon solar cell pv module and array etc this is a wafer then there is a module combination of number of uh, solar cells and depends on the voltage and ampere we get the power output of a module this is a schematic of how a solar cell when solar radiation is uh, uh, put on the solar cell how the electrons flow and we are able to generate electricity we start with p type silicon wafers see this p type wafer becomes when we grow crystal we dope the material material called polycrystalline material with a very small impurity with like boron boron powder is put to make the whole crystal p type and then that starting whatever wafer we get out of that crystal and that becomes p type silicon and then over that we make Uh, n type junction it's a pn junction and that mm -hmm. pn junction is used basically and then we have to have this uh, silver bus bars to have this current flow out of the cell when the light is shown on the solar cell so this is a schematic of a small solar cell this is also uh, showing different components of a solar module because basically we are having a module inside there is a glass and then on glass we are having number of solar cells connected in series and parallel and over that we put encapsulant which are uh, you know uh, very essential because when we deploy solar modules in the environment the it is they don't get affected by the environment either uh, sun or by rain or by humidity and then junction box is put on the back side so basically the preparation of the module takes place with all these uh, materials and we have to have a frame so that the edges that don't get dis, dis, you know damaged and also the moisture does not increase in inside the module this is another section of the pv module a single module is also called panel and number of modules put together they are normally called as array so cell is one then we have module then we have number of uh, modules called arrays this is a picture of a you know how big a solar uh, crystal or solar silicon casting uh, setup manufacturing setup looks like they are all abroad in india there is no industry of this kind this is what is expected and government of india has given lot of incentive to various existing industrialists to set up the uh, industry in india in the next 2 to 3 years so that we are self dependent on our own material and lot of incentives or benefits are being given to 
big industrialists to set up this uh, polycrystalline silicon material, then growing crystals in ingots, and then wafering, getting wafers, and then making cells. And of course, solar module industries are already there, but they are also not very large compared to what China has. China is supplying to whole of the world, but even in India, if we set up industries for our own needs, then it will be good enough so that, so that we don't have to import these materials. And later on, we can expand this industry for supplying outside to the other developing countries. This is the another view of this, how this, you know, the silicon solar cell, PV cell man, module manufacturing facility looks like. This is another conveyor belt. You know, a lot of automation is being used for various stages of the making of cell and module because you don't have to touch by hand because they are so highly pure material by touching with hand. Sometimes we can use gloves, but large number is, you know, involved. So automation is highly essential. This is a machine showing we have long rods of crystals grown in the furnace, monocrystalline silicon crystals or ingots. Then those ingots are cut into wafers. And since silicon is a very hard material next to diamond, so only thing what can cut silicon crystal or ingot is diamond wire. So thin diamond wires are used in this machine and we get simultaneously hundreds of wafers cut. And these wafer thickness is, you won't believe, not more than 180 micron, very thin. Because the thinner the uh, wafer, the more number of wafers we can draw from a single rod. Now, this is a kind of slide which shows what should be the broad strategy for India when we talk of uh, you know smart cities. That too, in the next 10 years, the whole of India or maybe in the next 15 years, we have to cover. So government of India has started a scheme that is called also walk. One sun, one world, one grid. So this is a very large project where we are converting challenges into opportunities. Apda or Afsar. Apda shuru hui and Afsar usko bana diya humne. So this is, this project is appreciated by all over the world that India is taking a lead and we have to make now, uh, you know, blueprint for 20 to 25 years vision, how the smart cities will be uh, powered with energy, that to renewable energy and that too with solar energy. So we have to start, you know, utilize increasing solar power in a hybrid mode where wind also is available. See, normally the availability of sun is in the daytime from morning seven to evening six or seven and wind availability is mostly at nighttime. So both are complementary technology and usage of hybrid renewable energy technologies will be very useful. We get double benefit of that. And then over that, if we start using the uh, you know battery storage system, that will be a, still a better thing so that throughout the day on 24 hour basis, we can generate power out of the renewable energies. So this slide gives idea about the, how the government of India is proposing. And India is already, as I said, a leader in the International Solar Alliance. So India's position is very strong as far as renewable energy is concerned. Now this is a continuation of this strategies. See, we have vast unutilized land. Power is there, buildings are there, infrastructure is there. And we have highly trained, motivated manpower. So this is a X factor which India can show to the world that we have all these facilities. And to the developing countries, we can uh, you know, uh, have export of our know-how, of our training. So we must have you know, special uh, SEZs where we can export this technology and export the products. And now government of India is also giving a lot of stimulus packages, soft loans and infrastructure support to start these industries within India so that we become a hub, big hub. Uh, and also the ease of doing business, hassle-free licensing is being given by government of India. 
so these are the strategies which government is focusing to attract you know this to have a, as a multiple uh, role of solar sector now this is a kind of a you can have a imagination of a solar blue sea they are of course uh, solar modules but they are generating green power is a solar blue sea generating green power is just for your imagination now exponential solar growth prediction now as i said the this slide has many points the gist of that is that there is a international institute for energy economic and financial analysis in usa they have analyzed they have done the analytics that solar mm -hmm. power will be the major power beyond 2030 and the cost of generating power will be very very negligible unless we produce in a huge capacity <coughs> and then we can take benefit of economy of scale solar power will be the major power and now the uh, the uh, availability of finances is also becoming very cheap the rate of return on finance is becoming very low so there is a big scope of Uh, solar growth in the next 20 to 30 years now these are some of the things which i have tried to show that the gist is we must have in india manufacturing of polysilicon this slide shows solar power production new technology perspective so new technologies like manufacturing of polysilicon large dia mono ingots wafers then new technologies of making cells what we were making earlier there are a lot of advancements in the world. so we must adopt those some of these are already being ad adopted silicon perc cells mono bifacial n type mono silicon and thin wafers so this slide describes what are the new things which are coming up and india has yet to pick up although india is making modules but many of the things are yet to be taken up so these are the things when we go for large number of in house production and these are the latest things which are available abroad and we will be at par with the technology now this is just some details of uh, the latest uh, solar cell technology perc uh, you know which is called passive emitter rear contact mono silicon high efficiency cell and this is one technology for making uh, you know latest technology for making solar cells there are some other technologies see in india or maybe not in india basically india is not doing any kind of law i mean big r and d work because lot of money and lot of finances are required to carry out advanced r and d so basically in other developed countries lot of r and d work is going on and there are other technologies which are also coming up but as i said particularly the crystalline silicon based Uh, you know mono crystalline or multi crystalline solar will continue to rule the world in the next 20 to 30 years because lot of r and d is going on in this technology also as the efficiency of this cell is around 20 to 22% and the efficiency will go up and cost will come down so this technology will not like to uh, get overtaken by another any other technology there are many other technologies which are on which r and d is going on but definitely we have to see in the long run which technology will prove the best these are some benefits of how the perc cells are features are there this is how the interconnection of uh, you know solar modules solar cells are done basically these are the uh, basic things how a module pv module is made and how we measure the Uh, parameters of any solar cell or any solar module there are four or five things open circuit voltage short circuit current maximum power point maximum power voltage maximum power current so basic data comes from any cell or module gives about uh, us idea about the quality and the suitability of that uh, device there is another you know technology called heat modules heat is basically heter junction with an intrinsic thin layer this technology uses crystalline as well as thin film technology 
and the efficiency is of the order of 22%. But this technology has not yet come up to the commercial scale because of the cost. So if the cost comes down, then only it can compete with crystalline silicon technology. Otherwise, it has a lot of uh, you know, uh, good potential. Now, this is a, another technology, bifacial, where we have in the normal silicon uh, solar module, we have single glass. Here we have double glass on the back side also and on the front side also. So the advantage of back and front is that it becomes bifacial and we are power, able to generate power from both the sides. Now this slide gives you idea about the gist is the back and front modules absorb radiation from both the sides because of the double glass and generate power from back and front and estimated 25% additional yield we get because of this bifacial and power high, with higher output. So this is a new technology which is coming up and not yet taken up in India, but abroad people have made modules out of this bifacial double glass systems. Now these are the uh, you know various uh, accreditation which are being done on any silicon solar module. And these are IEC standards. <coughs> these standards are internationally approved standards and any country producing material or some device or some system, they have to get approval for all these uh, modules at different stages of production. They are IEC and in India also, our uh, BIS standards have been made equivalent to IEC. So any industry in India will have to get approval from BIS and pass their uh, test so as to get the IS certification. So these are the stand, this slide gives the uh, details of what are the various standards which we have to comply with when we go for manufacturing of solar systems. Now, these are also, this slide also gives, you know, diagnostic for diagnostic purpose, for electrical and performance parameters, for thermal radiance, environmental, mechanical. These are the tests which are carried out when we send our samples to laboratories, approved laboratories, for getting the feedback, what kind of quality is there. So quality has to be maintained, not at the time of production, but right from the procurement of material. When we procure sand for making polycrystalline silicon, then polycrystalline quality has to be of good high level to make silicon crystal or in God. Every stage has got standards, IEC standards. So we can measure, we can perform, uh, have the standards and get the output of the standard of the quality as per the standard is concerned. So the quality has to be of international IEC standard or BIS standards. Now, in the world, there are many companies who are very big companies who are doing the solar business. And that's why they are ruling the world and they are supplying material and many of the companies are from China and there are two, three companies listed in this, but their grades, like AAA grade is the highest quality company as per the standards are concerned. Then AA, single A, and then there are companies like Tata Power, then Wari, and then Adani, who are also existing in the top PV module producers, but their level is not as high as of the Chinese company. So we must produce material of higher quality and higher quality will mean the life of the solar module or a cell basically was 25 years and with increased quality, it is going further to 30 years. So we can continue to get power output maybe at a slightly lower level when we go to 25, 30 years level. So the quality will basically decide how long the module will perform. Now, all this can be done. We have to develop our positive attitude when we go for big new projects like smart cities. See, we have been developing and establishing various big projects. Our is a very big country with a lot of industrialization, but smart city is a very big challenging project. And it is going to create clean and eco benign energy is to be utilized in setting up of smart cities. So although the pandemic has put roadblocks, 
causing disruptions the law of nature cannot be defied and we all must develop a positive attitude with positive attitude and by believing in self and trust in god we can overcome this the crisis period demands patience and dedicated team spirit we must work hard like you no know, japanese or chinese people are they are definitely uh, categorized as very hard working people and nature is a great experimenter we must honor and we should not destroy the balance of nature and finally we must full conditionally support government of india in various schemes and whatever projects government of india decides to put up for the benefit of the country finally be friendly with nature it will nurture you beautifully and transform challenges into opportunities thanks for your kind attention and patience this is my email id and cell number anything you would like to discuss or get want some clarification i'll be available and this is another picture i showed you one picture in the beginning this is a complimentary picture where in spite of having not much in their life they have the happiness the picture itself depicts they are have a divine affection and happiness this is the kind of happiness we should get which is not materialistic but it is a real happiness thank you so much i uh, thank you thank you sir uh, for such a wonderful and informative presentation on uh, challenges and opportunities for solar green power in developing smart economies the presentation was very comprehensive one it covered smart city mission atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan make in india initiative uh, uh, innovation challenge for energy storage by dst then uh, like mnre developing oswag pv module accreditations and there were a lot of lot of things for us to carry with us uh, there is a demand from the participants they want your presentations so i will request you to please if you can mail these presentations to us it will be great because most of the uh, participants are requesting for it so ma'am 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 mm -hmm. can you hear me yes sir i can hear you i have already mailed it to professor jaiswal Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. So I, I also mentioned that uh, um, many of the participants they want to see again the yes, copies is available. available with you. Yeah, at the, yeah, it is available on YouTube. We have the link has been shared to all the participants. And truly, I believe knowledge can't be taught; it has to be gained. And uh, it is the your experience through that experience you have gained this knowledge. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. We are humbled. Um, that you presented, you took out the time and presented it for all of us. Okay. I am also grateful and thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, sir. Now uh, we have the another after this uh, very informative session. Uh, first session, uh, we have the second session, and uh, for the second session, uh, the, the title goes Introduction to Photovoltaics and Renewable Energy. the photovoltaics and applied market prospects technology experience the speaker is uh, dr peter path he is ceo rct solutions private limited germany uh, before i ask uh, request uh, dr pa uh, peter to start his presentation let me just give a brief introduction of uh, dr peter Dr Peter Park is an expert in silicon ingot wafer solar cell module and thin film manufacturing he has received his phd in semiconductor physics for university of konstanz germany dr path at present managing director uh, of rct solutions germany formerly he has worked with university of uh, ravensburg as faculty of mechanical engineering and with university of uh, stu to grad ipe in faculty of electrical engineering dr peter has authored and co-authored more than 200 publications he has 15 patents or patent applications in the photovoltaic area he has like if i just go on like i had visited their website also so there is lot which i can speak about him um, but i think that we should okay, i think okay, we should okay, okay. presentation more 
because uh, like uh, and at the, he is, he has been responsible for various uh, due diligence and auditing reports in pv sector he has a uh, like a um, vast experience uh, which is related to the pv sector so it will be wonderful to listen to him uh, uh, dr peter i welcome you on behalf of uh, sharda university and especially school of engineering and technology and i am very thankful to you that you have taken out the time and uh, you have graced this uh, occasion uh, and it, during this time of pandemic and uh, all the uh, uh, all the participants uh, will definitely be benefited by your presentation so over to you uh, sir could you, if you can start with uh, suman so ma'am should may here uh huh uh, ma'am can you please share the ppt of uh, dr peter okay okay sure yeah. have you mailed me the recent yes, one yes yes i have mailed you ma'am okay okay just give me a couple of seconds yes. so first of all thanks a lot ms suman for your so kind introduction it's a big pleasure and honor <clears throat> to join this webinar and to give my own perspective together with my colleague Sukuma, who is also online, uh, and yes. share our views. Hi, Sukuma. So it's a big honor and pleasure. And please let us be interactive. Uh, if at the end you have uh, questions, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, we have to prepare too many PowerPoint slides. I um, apologize. But it's for up. It's for you. We will share it by PDF. You can have a close look at the PDF. Uh, we don't want to delete too many slides. So, then let me let us start. So first of all, before we show the slides, perhaps I can show you something in my back. You yes. see this? There are two important milestones of my current work. First of all, as a as an outstanding speaker of my previous uh, of our your previous speaker. Uh, has given, we have to do manufacturing and we have to do it in India. You have mentioned Vari, you have mentioned Vikram, Adani, of course. But now I'm in Turkey and we are setting up a 500 megawatt ingot wafer cell and module monoperk bifacial half cut production line. And this is a layout. It's a 84,000 square meter big, huge factory. And we are now ready. And this is the next one I want to show you. Yesterday we got our first module out. And I want to celebrate with you and share with you uh, that we have reached that beautiful progress. And I want to encourage India, please also uh, uh, increase your value generation, make more cell capacity, make more ingot and wafer capacity. It's done now in Turkey. It will be done so easily in India. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I want to give you confidence. And this is our first module, uh, which is coming out. So hope that uh, India will give you also an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have been uh, um, engaged at Adani. We have been technology provider to Adani. We are working with other Indian players. We are well. We are always so welcomed by the hospitality of Indian uh, friends. Good. So then, let us start the presentation. I don't know if I also can operate the presentation. No, you will not be. I will have to operate for you. But uh, anyway, oh, it's, it's my pleasure, Ms. Uman. So let us continue. Speak up. So just a quick snapshot uh, from my side. So I mean, I'm 28 years in photovoltaics. I worked uh, as a, a teacher at university for 12 years. I was then assistant uh, institute leader. Uh, and, uh, and then later on, I moved to a German machine maker, Central Term. We have prepared four solar factories in India uh, uh, for Jupiter Solar, WebSol and so, and so on. And I was a CTO and director of Central Term. Later on, I moved to another German machine maker, Arena, who is doing wet chemical equipment. And now I founded RCT Solutions and RCT Power. RCT Power, we are doing battery storage. We have our factory in China that we are producing batteries and uh, container based batteries. And RCT Solutions is preparing factories together with customer. I'm currently Chairman, uh, board member of the German Machine Maker Association. I'm teacher at the University of Ravensburg, and I'm the founder and director of uh, the a research institute in Konstant in the National Solar Energy Research Center. Please, next slide. Next slide. This is just for you to read more if you want to know more. Next slide, please. So now let us scratch over to photovoltaics. I think these slides I like too, very much. 
because it shows a huge potential of solar uh, energy generation. In this cube, you can see the annual solar radiation as compared to the accumulated uh, reserves of fossil, oil, gas, and coal, and nuclear. And this small, tiny red cube at the corner uh, of this cube, that is the annual energy consumption. So as you can easily see, our sun is giving so much energy to us. It's easy to uh, supply us with electricity and energy for all over the year. And if you look at the limited resources of oil and gas, I think it's a clear indication on the long run, we have to work with solar and renewable energy and wind. On the right side, on the right cube, you will see the comparison of different uh, renewable energy sources like water power, biomass, wind energy. So the second largest is wind energy, which is also renewable. And we have uh, uh, water power, which has uh, some limitations, of course. So, but still you see all the renewable energy sources are very much more than what we need per year uh, to supply our energy. Please, next one. Yes, so this is a solar power. We have 165,000 terawatt free solar power uh, continuously all over the globe, much more than we need. Then I also uh, I want to share this slide with you. If we just assume the world energy consumption and look at the area we need at a given location, I don't say we have to put all solar modules in the Sahara Desert or in Gobi Desert and generate the energy for the world. I just want to let you know that uh, uh, that we have this different type of uh, cubes and areas. So you see from the spot that we just need some limited area to supply enough energy for the world, uh, as you can see. Sukuma, is the connection good? Yes, uh, it's perfect. Yeah, we okay. can. Good. Then that is another slide. It's a little bit busy. It shows I will come later on. Let us continue. It's a little bit small uh, numbers. Uh, uh, again, uh, let us continue. Is, these all slides are for you to study, to read more carefully if you like. Please, next slide. So this slide is very important also to show because, oh, can we jump? Yes, this one. Here you see the different technologies which will come up uh, based on a, uh, on a study. Uh, which have been done recently. And you see the potential of different energy sources. And what is obvious and clear to outline, in the next couple of 20 years, the whole trend will go into renewable energy. And we have to decline the share of fossil power because it pollutes our environment. It's, uh, not, uh, it's detrimental to all of us. And it gives so much friction uh, in our global society. So we have solar power, we have wind power, uh, we have other renewable energies and nuclear, you see, we have a strong limitation on nuclear power. Uh, so that is not a way to go. So I strongly encourage you, all of you, let us work hard, as my uh, the previous speaker saying, uh, to get more renewable energy. And India has a huge potential. Please, next slide. This is a study which shows a little bit longer perspective. The previous slide was just over the next 20 years to show solar uh, photovoltaic potential. That was done by Shell. You know, Shell is a, a prominent oil company. They thought very carefully how much solar will come in the next couple of decades. And they were looking much more in the future until the next 50 to 80 years. And you see their prediction is that solar will grow over proportionally. As you know, every year we have about growth rate of 15 to 20% our industry is growing. And they're predicting that uh, solar will be most widely used renewable energy source. Uh, of course, wind will grow as well. But as you know, wind also has limitations because uh, we have some good wind sites, but not all sites over the globe are good for wind power. We also have biomass and biofuels. Uh, and, uh, but the biggest is uh, uh, solar. So we are expecting 22 terawatts coming from solar in the year 2015. Also, I want to encourage you that uh, if you look at the accumulated uh, power, uh, last year we have accumulated power by 500 gigawatt, uh, more than 500 gigawatt of solar power installation all over the globe. That is so many power plants uh, uh, which can be substituted by solar. Peter, sorry to disturb you, Peter. 
maybe can you be so little bit louder please yes a bit louder and closer to the microphone please is it better now yes it's much better yes please okay come. So then we have about last year we had about 500 gigawatt uh, 2018 of installed power and by this huge increase of photovoltaics global globally used so every year we are getting 100 120 new gigawatt coming on the grid that all automatically leaves by the uh, 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 to reduce cost so if you look at the cost spam of photovoltaics in euros and uh, US cent per kilowatt hour you see that PV utility is very strongly going down. Recent bids in Saudi Arabia showed uh, power purchase agreements over 15 and 25 years of less than two US cent per kilowatt hour. So that uh, you see, you can also compare with other, other energy sources like wind offshore, wind onshore, coal. And you see uh, solar is getting now on utility scale, which means uh, in the megawatt and gigawatt uh, scale of power plants, it's getting so big. Of course, we also have this decentralized photovoltaics on the roofs. So everybody can be his own power plant owner on his own roof. And that is also uh, quite reasonable in the budget. Let us say we are at seven, eight cents per kilowatt hour. Next, please. This is a global scale. As I mentioned, of course, we have to look at the sun belt of the earth. You see in the center part around the equator, we have very uh, good uh, uh, cost structure because per square meter we can get more energy because the sun illumination is stronger. And if you are going up, which means in higher altitude like mountains, you also see very uh, good cost structure like you see in South America in the Chile area. Uh, uh, there we are also at very uh, low cost per kilowatt hour photovoltaic energy generation. Either we are at high altitude or we are in the in the in the sun belt of the earth next please so now the photovoltaic overview next please yes of course uh, clearly it has to mention photovoltaics is a direct conversion of uh, sun energy into electricity so we don't need turbines we just put this beautiful black uh, panel which i show behind me into the sunshine and the cables will immediately yield electricity. So we have no moving parts. Uh, we have also power generation at the peak demand uh, of uh, our industry, which means during the daytime where we have aircon running, where we have the industry running, we have offices running. And that is also where most of the sunshine is coming. Uh, we, have, we are noiseless, we have no emissions. Uh, we can be small and big. We can make small power plants just to feed some uh, lights, uh, uh, some uh, um, um, a radio, uh, uh, or we can have it for the house, we can have it for the village, and we can make power plants for cities in the gigawatt scale. So that means we can come from watt to gigawatt, uh, and that is easy to be scaled. You know, we don't have to build huge big power plants, which takes a long time to erect, just if you want to have a one gigawatt power plant, we can make in less than one year. Uh, then, uh, as you know, the energy comes free. The sunshine is free. Uh, that is another good. The fuel is free of charge. We don't need coal. We don't need uranium. It's free of charge. And we nearly need no operational and maintenance cost. The disadvantage of photovoltaics, so of course, we have some disadvantages. We need storage. We have different type of storage uh, 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 possibility, like hydro pump power storage. We can have um, um, electrical storage, battery storage. We can convert electricity in hydrogen and use hydrogen as a storing agent. Uh, but storage is still an issue. We have non-uniform power generation, uh, such as during the day we have power, when the sun is shining, when the clouds are coming, when it's raining, we have less power. In the night, of course, we have no power. And we need area because you can say per square meter and the current time period, we are running at about per square meter 150 to 200 watt. So if you want to have a big scale power plant, now in my, uh, at my customer here in Turkey, they're building up a 1.3 gigawatt PV power plant, single spot and they need 29 square kilometer of land. That is also a disadvantage. Next slide, please. 
So photovoltaics, generally speaking, you see the short history. Our, our pioneer was a French scientist, Mr. Becquerel. He saw the first photovoltaic effect in 1893. So that is really a long lasting um, observation. But we have to say uh, for a long time period, solar was not used. Uh, uh, mostly at the 60s and 70s, it was used for satellite. We went to space with solar. In 1954, the first modern PV cell was produced with a limited efficiency of 14% at the Bell Labs, Becquerel, uh, uh, sorry, Bell Laboratories in USA. And later on, we went to the satellites. We used solar for satellite uh, uh, electricity supply. And then we went down to Earth. And mostly, we can say from 9, 2000 on, the solar was used so widely. Next, please. So also to make your mind very sharp, we can distinguish between different solar power and energy generation. One which is also used in India for cooking and for some heating agent. We have solar thermal, so we are generating hot water or some cooking. Uh, we can also use solar by some concentration, ag concentration agent to uh, heat up some oil and we have a heat exchanger and we can make turbine and steam and turbines, which is called solar thermal. Or we have photovoltaics and there we can distinguish between three te technologies. One is CPV, concentrated photovoltaics. So we are taking lenses and concentrate to small solar cells and getting the energy. We have the 95% of the current industry is using crystalline silicon. So we are making such panels, what you can see in my back. Or we can have thin film, uh, which is coating glass sheets with a photovoltaic sensitive material. And then you get electricity out of this coated glass. For crystalline silicon, which is a dominating and working horse, there you use silicon sheets, we call it wafer. Uh, you're making solar cells out of it. You're putting it behind glass and connect and solder it. And that is uh, now, now about 95% of global production is in crystalline silicon. And India, mostly all India is in crystalline silicon. The most major production for crystalline silicon, of course, is in China. Uh, we can say currently about 75 to 80% of the production capacity is in China, but we see a large trend in the world towards localization. Uh, like India, like Turkey, like Europe, European, like USA. Now the more and more capacity will move back to the global users of photovoltaics. Uh, some people have uh, some hesitates to give all in the hand of China and all the jobs are generated in China. The capital is made in China. So uh, especially our German government want to become independent from Chinese production. So we have now very strong discussions to set up our own production, a big uh, solar factor in Europe. And you have the same discussions in India. So your government is pushing also very strong. Here you see the beautiful different applications. We have building integrated photovoltaics. We have rooftop integrated photovoltaics. We have power plant scale. And of course, India is a wide span land. You have very remote uh, locations. So if you need electricity, you just put in some panels, you have an AC-DC converter, and you get the energy for your remote uh, usage. Next, please. So that is a typical PV system, how it works. The photovoltaic panels have DC power output. So first of all, you have to convert DC into AC uh, electricity. And then you can either connect it to the grid by so-called grid-connected photovoltaics, or you can uh, have storage. So you can also have a totally independent autonomous house and it can run on storage and photovoltaics also. Mostly used for residential applications, we are connecting solar to the grid. So directly connected to the grid. So we are taking energy during the night and we are giving energy during the day. Now, because electricity is getting more and more relevant, you can add now the car station because we have electric cars, they also will be supplied by the solar panel on your roof. And also we are using now more and more heat pumps to make hot water and heating. Uh, and most likely not so much used in India, heating. Uh, and that also will come to the solar system, which you see on the right side. Next, please. 
Here you see different uh, applications of grid connected centralized. So that is centralized photovoltaics. Uh, <coughs> you can see different uh, countries and locations, big power stations in the gigawatt range. And now, now more and more of these huge, incredibly huge uh, centralized power plants are done. These centralized power plants is useful to do because uh, we should have it uh, 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 if it's a good location and there's a big city next to it or a grid infrastructure, why not to make a big uh, scale, uh, utility scale PV power plant? Mostly the costs are very cheap. As you saw from the previous slide, you can save about 20% in budget if you make it big. But for residential, of course, it's useful if, um, uh, if uh, each houses are using it because you don't have the grid loss. Next slide, please. Here you see uh, the global horizontal irradiation, uh, the good location. You see uh, the scale is in kilowatt hours per square meter. That means, for example, in my home country, Germany, we can typically generate 1000 kilowatt hours per square meter. Uh, but in India, you see you can make about 1.5 more. By the same investment, you get 1.5 more energy because the sunshine is big. And you see perfect locations like in Chile, in Akanema, they have, it's high. High means cool, high means less cloud. Uh, so you also have up to 2.5 more or in Sahara, but Sahara has a bit, it's, it's too hot. Here you see the uh, uh, demand outlook in the PV global market. The biggest demand is in China. Then we have USA, which is strong. We have a whole Europe, which is a big market. And of course, India is growing so sharply. Your government is so visionary and so good. So they really are pushing for the world takes and we should do it uh, to preserve our, our world and nature. Please, next slide. Here you see the cost decline because we have to make solar cheap and cheaper and cheaper. And I like the idea of a Japanese uh, investor saying, okay, I have my 15 years uh, depreciation period for my power station. When this depreciation is finished because there's nearly no maintenance, I will give the solar energy free. So he's saying, I have to recover my investment after 15 years. I hand over my power plant to the country to the people and they get energy for free and this i like too much and you see by the decline of the prices every year we are crashing down in prices the beautiful things of photovoltaics it's one of the energy sources which needs most jobs you see in this solar energy because we need a lot of jobs for production and we are generating a lot of jobs for uh, establishing uh, a solar power plant on the house, on the roof, on the big ground. In totally, we have about 8.1 8 billion jobs in renewable energy, and the biggest pie is in solar. So that is a good development. Solar energy needs a lot of jobs, makes a lot of jobs. Wind is less prominent. Bioenergy is also quite good. Next, please. And this, uh, let us continue. Uh, also, yes. Also, uh, because there was a long discussion, perhaps we can just jump one more back. Uh, there was a long discussion ongoing. Oh, sorry. Uh, just, uh, just back, please. Back. Yes. Yeah, because, you know, there's a long uh, global discussion uh, to how much do we invest in solar, uh, how we should do. Uh, and I have to say uh, <coughs> that we are now in the stage that we don't need subsidies. We are in the subsidy free area, you see in this one. That means global government support should just focus on uh, regulations, uh, how solar is used and what are the rules and regulations behind it. But we don't need subsidies anymore. We are now in the subsidy free uh, regime. And that is important to mention. Next, please. So now let us talk a little bit about physics. You know, I'm a physicist, semiconductor physicist. I cannot let, let you go without talking about semiconductor physics. I'm so sorry. So uh, here you see silicon. Uh, this is a raw material. We are using crystalline silicon and to have a, and we are using a solar cell. Uh, and I show you an example here. This is a solar cell, which we just produced. Uh, and that is a, 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 a diode 
we have a silicon wafer and we have a PN junction. So the core of the silicon, there's a little bit boron inside. At the surface, we have a little bit phosphorus in the silicon lattice, as you can see on that slide. That gives a little bit of different conductivity and makes a diode. So a solar cell is just a huge diode. Then you can see we are coating the front side with a unreflective coating to reduce the reflectance. And we also have a certain roughening of the surface. That means we are doing surface texturing. Then at the rear side, we are making metal contacts. We can make full area metal or we just make the same metal pattern as at the front side if we do it bifacial. This at the back is a bifacial one. This is a single facial one. Uh, and by Faisal, uh, our friend, uh, be, uh, which gave his speech before, already mentioned about it. So generally speaking, photovoltaics is just a big silicon wafer with it has a coating and doping, and it's very simple to produce. Uh, please, next one. Next one, please. One more, please. <laughs> yes. So if you make the bless one one before, please, Ms. Suma, Suma, one be yes. So what we have here is so if we put this big diet with some contacts on front and rear side to the sunshine, then you observe normally for a diet you have an IV curve, and by illuminating our solar cell, the diode typical IV curve, which is an exponential curve, just shifts down in into the minus uh, electrode current. And that gives a chance if you multiply I minus uh, multiplied by V, uh, count by voltage, you see a power curve. P equals I multiplied by V, so you see a power curve. So that means by doing this illumination, we are generating power. We have a voltage and the current flow, and we can generate electrical power. You can see it in this curve, and we have a maximum power point. This is very important to mention. At a certain voltage, the maximum power comes out of our solar cell and our solar module. So always we have to try to keep our system, our solar module at the maximum power point. Uh, next one, please. Yes, uh, next one, please. For those who want to become specialists on photovoltaics, please have a look at such slides. You can learn a lot. Also, we have a very standardized illumination because uh, people cannot cheat each other. We have a very strict certification so and quality assurance globally, which is tested by independent institutions. And typically, we are assuming uh, MS 1.8. Another, please, next one. Yes. Here we have the uh, illumination curve. It's very important to mention. You see the solar spectrum in yellow. And you see the power to be used by silicon. Not all from the solar spectrum we can use in our crystalline silicon, because crystalline silicon as a semiconductor can just observe a certain quant quantum. It cannot make more. Uh, so we are losing uh, a, a lot of the sunlight. So the maximum uh, efficiency, which means efficiency means the ratio of generated electrical power. Uh, 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 and also we have uh, uh, so it means that uh, by this ratio which is called efficiency we typically can get up to maximum about close to 30 percent of the illuminated sun power can be generated electricity the rest is unfortunately is lost and this is most driven by the semiconductor behavior our crystalline silicon also is a little bit weak with low illumination, so we just can generate energy during the day. Next, please. We have different type, as I mentioned already. We have crystalline silicon. Some people are using also organic material, but it's not so widely used. We have multi-junction solar cells, which means we are stacking different type of solar cell on each other. And there we are, can get more than 40% efficiency, but it's a little bit costly. And we can make flexible thin solar cells on foils, on uh, uh, metal foils. Next, please. Uh, next, please. So this is also what I want to uh, uh, share with you. You see the value, ch value chain. So for crystalline silicon, which is dominating, the first word we're using is a metallurgical silicon. We call it feedstock. Uh, 
Uh, and there we are making uh, out of a, a, a raw metal, metallurgic silicon. We are cleaning it by the so-called polysilicon factory. Then we are growing ingots and crystals. And later on, we are cutting wafers out of it. Then we are making solar cells out of it. We are making modules and systems. That is a typical value chain of photovoltaics. And in Turkey, we are now doing this ingot. So here you see some statistics for people who like statistics. Here you see the latest efficiency numbers and record efficiencies. So currently we are going above 26% efficiency for crystalline silicon. And we can even scratch more by concentrator photovoltaics. Next, please. Uh, champion module efficiency is also the module. In module, we are losing a little bit. Uh, next, please. And here you see also the higher the efficiency, the less area we need. So that means we should always target at high efficiency. And that is what the professor before told. Let us work in India to get very high quality product and a high efficiency product uh, uh, comparable or better what is reached in China. I think you have a very well educated people in India. Why you not should not get the same performance numbers as Chinese players. Uh, so let us go for big efficiencies, high efficiencies, because then the area consumption is less, or you can get more power from the same roof. Next, please. Here you see all the, the cost elements. We have to we have uh, here the cost split of a PV system. The now the module, uh, which uh, you can see behind me, that is one component. Uh, that is about uh, currently about 40% of a PV system. Then we have to use an inverter, which converts DC power and AC power. That is about 6%. Then we have to do some cabling and, and wiring. That is about 6% today. And then we have the mounting, which means we have to put them on a, a metal structure. We have to put it on a metal structure on the roof, on the power plant, or we are now using tracker. Uh, uh, which have a one axis movement following the sunlight. That is about 70%. And we have to prepare the ground, the field, that is another 20%. And what you can see, because we are so strongly reducing the cost for module, the module proportion is going down. So now let us go to the next slide. This is so beautiful, the bifacial PV technology. And it's more and more used in India as well, because that is so funny because you're putting your module and before we didn't have this bifaciality, three, four years ago, we didn't have. So now we have this bifaciality uh, and uh, so that means uh, this uh, bifaciality means you have sunshine from the front, you have uh, sunshine from the rear by diffuse sunlight and your solar cell can generate energy from both sides. That automatically led to a jump. Also, we didn't have to change too much on the solar cell and on the solar module, just using glass, glass, and glass instead of glass foil. So that means we have these two sides where we can generate light, and it, the immediately the energy yield was jumping up by 15%. This is so fantastic by just small improvements. So please, if you are preparing such power plants, look at this beautiful project in Akanema Desert in Chile. Uh, use uh, by facial. Uh, this is a fixed mounting system. Now people are using the tracking system. So that means the modules are following the sun, sunlight, like the sunflowers. And there you can chat, get so much more power, as you can see, up to 40% more power on one slide. So that next, please. So what we are currently doing here in Turkey, this is a standard solar cell production process. First, we have the wafer, we are doing some surface cleaning, some phosphor diffusion, because we have to make the PN junction and reflective coating, metal coating, and that's it. So here in Turkey, we are now preparing this factory. And to make a cell factory, that just take eight months. To prepare a module factory, just take be less than six months. If you want to have an ingot factory and the crystal growing factory, that just takes 12 months. So the typical investment in such a, a power plant, let us say a 500 megawatt, that is about 120 million US dollar if you want the, from ingot to finished uh, uh, module. Uh, if you just want to have a, a simple module factory, you have just have to invest about uh, four to five million US dollar. So we are, you can start 
to make a with a module factory. Later on, you can integrate the cell factory. And if you want to jump big, you can go into ingot and wafer factory. And that all can be done in India. And you already have in India cell factory and you have uh, the module factory is available. And now the Indian government is uh, enforcing also ingot and wafer should come from, from made in India. So that is a perk structure. Uh, I think uh, let us continue. Yes, here we have a, the latest technology. Let us jump just one up. I don't know, Miss Suman, how much time do I still have? I, you have 30, um, around 30 minutes. Uh, okay, good. So then let us look at PERC. Uh, here we have a PERC cell. This is a new development uh, introduced in the industry, let us say, four or five years ago. So we have for the first at the front side, Oh, sorry. At the front side, we have uh, the so-called PN junction I mentioned already, which is called also uh, emitter. Then on top of it, what you see on the on the amplification magnification, you have the so-called unreflective coating. This unreflective coating reduces the reflectance, uh, uh, which is coming from the front side. Then, of course, you need metal contacts, and I show you on my sample. You have these white lines. And you have these grids like this, and this is helping you to collect. Yes, and this helps to collect the the, the energy and the and the electricity all over and guide it out by the so-called bus bus to outside cables. And at the rear side, you have some uh, another coating like at the front side, and you can print at the rear side. You can metallize the rear side like the front side, and then it's getting bifaced. If you don't want, then you just put full area metal at the rear side. So that means this cell structure is looking very simple. And here you see the detailed production flow. So first is the incoming wafer inspection. So we are talking about the cell because cell is a key for all these solar value chain because solar cell that makes the engine. Later the module, it just protect the solar cell and before the wafer is not a functional uh, um, device. So by the solar cell factory, there you're really making the work, the things working. So first we have the incoming wafer, which comes from the silicon wafer factory, uh, which is a 158 times 158 or 166 times 166, 180 micrometer thin silicon sheet, or we call it wafer, like the semiconductor guys. And that sheet comes to our factory. It's dirty on the surface a little bit, so we have to clean it. We have to measure it if there are no defects, no crystal structure defects. So we are doing a very well, very accurate incoming wafer inspection. Uh, then after that, we have to remove some damage because the wafer is generated by cutting with the diamond wire source from a big silicon block. So we have to clean the surface and make it free of defects. And then we are applying a so-called surface texturing. That means we are roughening the surface and making pyramids just by chemical etching. Then we have these pyramids done and the surface has to be cleaned. Typically we are using chemicals to clean it. So we are using water solution. And then after all this stuff is cleaned, then we are doing it into a furnace, which is called uh, emitter diffusion. So we are putting all these 1000 pieces of silicon wafers into a big quartz tube. We are putting POCL3 chemical in a gas stream into it. And then you at the surface, you observe there's a certain growth of a silicon phosphor class, which uh, silica silicate, which contains phosphor class. And from this by 850 to 900 degrees Celsius, we are driving in the phosphor into our silicon lattice. To make it more functional, next step, we are using a laser because at the area where we have the contacts, you know, these white contacts, we are using laser and burning laser, the phosphor is more deep into it. So we can make our contacts more functional and, uh, and uh, more robust. That is called laser doping or selective emitter. After that, we are just removing uh, this phosphor class and we are cleaning the rear side because of the rear side we also have phosphor we don't want to have we just have at one side our phosphorus so we are doing the rear side etching and after that we are going it back into a furnace 
and heating up the whole uh, wafer again by uh, oxygen and by nitrogen. Uh, so we are doing a thermal oxide layer, which is a very good passivating layer, and we are activating more carefully the phosphorus. After that, we are taking it all out of our annealing machine, and we are putting it into a, a, a rear side coating. For the rear side coating, we are using aluminum oxide and nitride stack. So first we are putting it into a plasma coating machine. We are coating the rear side uh, by plasma uh, and aluminum oxide. And then on top of the aluminum oxide, we are putting silicon nitride and then the rear side is finished. Then we turn it and on the front side, we are just putting silicon nitride. Then both sides are coated by so-called unreflective coating and dielectric layer. One side aluminum oxide silicon nitride by plasma coating and the front side just silicon nitride. After that, because you know uh, 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 silicon nitride and aluminum oxide, they are dielectrics. So we cannot get, if we just print our or make our metal contacts on this unreflective coating, then we would not get any electricity out because the silicon nitride is an insulator. So what we have to do is at the contacts where we have our metal contacts, we have to use a laser and burn uh, the silicon nitride at the rear side, especially this aluminum oxide and silicon nitride layer has to be opened. And we are just where we make the contacts, we burn with the laser openings. At the front side, we don't have to do, luckily, because at the front side, we don't have aluminum oxide and we can just use uh, our metal. We are using screen printing. We are printing an ink uh, containing silver and that ink can burn through the silicon nitride. So at the front side, you don't need laser. At the rear side, we need laser. So then after having this laser treatment at the rear side, we are just simply screen printing. Uh, we are just using a printing machine and printing these white metal contacts on the front side. It goes so fast and we are using ink for it, which is called paste. For the front side, it contains silver. For the rear side, mostly aluminum because aluminum is so cheap. And then we have to sinter this metal ink into our silicon a little bit. And that we call fast firing or contact firing. And after that, we are doing some tricks to push up the efficiency and stabilizing. And then all our solar cell is finished. We do testing and sorting, deal done. So now you ask me, okay, Peter, that doesn't seem to be too complicated. So we should do it in India. So how to do it in India? As I said, it's not so complicated. Adani have a cell factory. We have other players in, in India, Renewsys, uh, other players in India who have already cell factories. Uh, so if you want to have the most advanced uh, cell line like this so-called PERC or PERC plus or PERC by facial, you need about an investment of about, let us say, 25 million US dollar for about uh, 500 megawatt, which is quite big on Indian size. This would be the one of the biggest after Adani, the second biggest cell factory. You need about 25 million US dollar plus a building plus some utilities uh, to support this factory. You need about eight, eight months time and you need about at the end, depending how you do it, how is it the degree of automation, you need about, I would say 300 to 400 people working in that 500 megawatt factory. So that's all. Uh, and you can get it from technology providers, from uh, owners, engineers, you can get it EPC, you can get this with financing from Europe, from China. So it's not rocket science anymore. So uh, please, uh, encourage yourself and your some stakeholders to do it. So next slide is a <coughs> we have selective emitter. I explained already before. So we are just burning below the contact. You see this dark red uh, layer, uh, highly doped emitter, which means we just use the laser to burn the phosphorus more deep into it. Next, please. Uh, silicon share of mono and multi. That is another discussion. So in the past, we have used in India mostly multi-crystalline silicon. And what you see in the past, in the just past five years, six years, so much was more moving into monocrystalline silicon. Also, multi is cheaper. Now you might say, hey, Peter, why we did it 
Multi is cheaper. We use it so widely in India. Why people use mono? And this, this I can say was more a Chinese industry policy because from the cost structure, Mali is still the cheapest. But by this effort, they want to push their own industry up. So they promoted very much monocrystalline silicon. And since they have been the dominating player globally, uh, then multi was decreasing and mono became more and more just by industry policy. There is no really big benefit behind it, if, especially when you, run, when you work for utility scale photovoltaics. But this is reality. So new factories in India, which we are also discussing now, mostly want to have monocrystalline silicon technology and not multi anymore, although also it's the cheapest and easy to implement. But this is how it is. Next, please. So here we have the, uh, as my, the previous speaker said already, we also want to show some new trends of the perk, what is coming next. We have so-called heterogeneous junction. You're not using diffusion. You're not using uh, um, 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 some type of uh, thermal processes. You are just making coatings. You are choosing a very good wafer. You have to use a so-called N-type wafer. That means we are not using boron. We are using phosphorus inside the silicon lattice uh, for the wafer. And then we are doing just some coating, uh, um, uh, intrinsic amorphous silicon or dope silicon. So we are coating silicon on silicon. And then we have to make the unreflective coating and the same metal contact as, as I explained for PERC. And then you can make a hetero cell structure. Typically, the efficiencies are a little bit 1% absolute above PERC cell. Uh, so that is an advantage if you go to hetero junction. The big problem is. The line looks totally different. You cannot upgrade. So if you want to have, a, if you have a cell line and you want to upgrade to hit our chunk, you can just throw to trash your old existing line. The alternative, what we have in industry for high efficiency for the most advanced technology is IBC in the digitated back contact cell structures developed long time ago. Uh, and there you are just moving all the metal contacts to the rear side. So the front side, which gets the most sunshine is fully free of metal contacts. That means there is no shedding from the metal coming. And these IBC cell structure are also in production, uh, mostly by uh, uh, two big players, US players uh, and one Asian player. Hedora Changchin is in production by one Japanese player. But if you look at the statistics, please have a look at the right side, which is prepared by the International Technology Roadmap for Photovoltaics by German VDMA. And you clearly see the strongest, strongest pillar is still PERC technology. PERC is still the way to go. So that means if you are in PERC, uh, just, uh, uh, can you just move back? So PERC is the way to go. So PERC is dominating. Don't, if you want to go into cell production, don't go into the risk of federal junction. IBC county just set up a most advanced PERC line and you're doing a good thing. Uh, and uh, thanks a lot for your attention. I hope I could give you a very fast snapshot. Uh, of course, so many information have been given, but don't hesitate to contact us. Sukuma, my colleague Sukuma, he's now in India yes. and he's in India. And don't hesitate. Sukuma, you can also say some words. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Peter. So please write questions to the email ID provided and also you can contact the webinar manager, sir, for any questions. If you have any questions directly to Dr. Peter Fath, you can ask. Uh, there are like few of the questions are there, which uh, I will be taking up. One of the like participants in a, are there uh, thoughts in the industry to extend solar photo cell capabilities beyond visible range spectral operation at fundamental level without using extensions like solar thermal or any other systems? Mm. You see, just solar cells. Just solar cell. Beyond, uh, beyond visible range asking i'm repeating it again uh, are there thoughts in the industry to extend solar photo cells capabilities beyond visible range spectral operation 
at fundamental level without using extensions like solar thermal or any other system yes yeah of course we have had in the in the history we had solar photovoltaic uh, systems mostly used for space application at that time being that just worked on infrared and near infrared because uh, most of these products were used based on indium phosphide and other ex a little bit exotic materials like you have for the night vision camera systems and then those solar cells were used in uh, in uh, satellites they're using uh, nuclear power nuclear cells and these nuclear cells gave heat and they coated the reactor inside by uh, infrared solar cells so there are infrared solar cells available Based, mostly based on indium arsenide or indium phosphide. They're very powerful and good, and they can uh, use uh, uh, near infrared and infrared. Uh, one, one, more first, one more is there, but I think that uh, the answer is very clear to it. Our India is most manufacturing, uh, is not manufacturing solar cells. Most of the countries are dependent on China. Why can't we manufacture in India? So I think that the answer is clear that we can. So, Clear, Misuman. If we have to, you have to do it in India. I think why not to do it in India? You have very capable scientists. You have very capable engineers. You have the market. You have your experience. You have module producers. So many. Uh, why not to increase your value generation in India? You have Adani. Of course, it's a one gigawatt factory. It's a good on a global scale, and more players should come into the market. And you know the investment is getting less and less and less and less. So just to have a one gigawatt factory, you just have to invest perhaps 40, 50 million US dollar, including everything. And then you have a one gigawatt factory, which can provide the market. From the technology, there is no showstopper on that. You can get it. Of course, we can help RCT like we do in Turkey, but I don't want to make any advertisement for us. So you can do it. Please yeah. do it. Europe, Germany, we are doing it. Uh, we have to become independent from strong Asian uh, players. Yes, surely India has to become Atma Nirva, that is self-reliant. Self and uh, I think that all the um, scientists, all the technologists uh, will uh, put up their efforts uh, to make India Atma Nirva. So with that note, uh, it's like uh, I would like to thank you once again for the comprehensive pre presentation and uh, thank you for presenting the global perspective, especially. And uh, like um, for anyone, even if he's a beginner, has started and attended this session, it was the basics of the PV, uh, which you, you told that I am a physicist, but I think that physics is the mother of engineering. So basics of PV as well as uh, like the bifacial uh, PV technology and the perk solar cell manufacturing, which you covered was wonderful. And um, a very, very like uh, a big thank you to you. And hopefully when the pandemic will be over, we will request you to please do come to India and visit Shada University as uh, okay. Sukumar uh, Sumit, uh, will help you to find the location. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, a very big thank you from Paramal. Uh, and you were bang on, on time. Okay, so there was to the point. Thanks everyone for organizing yes, and inviting us. It's our thank pleasure. You. Okay. okay. All the luck for India. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then uh, like we will be we are coming to end of today's session and uh, uh, we i will request all the participants to join us please tomorrow at uh, 11 uh, we will be having two sessions in the morning and in the afternoon we will be having again two sessions so over to you shinmai thank you ma'am uh, it was a great session dr peter and uh, it was very nice having you. We would like to have more collaboration with you with the help of uh, our very dear alumni, Sukuma. And we would like <laughs> to have more interaction, more technological uh, interaction between both of us, both organizations, which will further improve the strong relationship between us, which will take us to newer heights. Thank you very much. And well, thank you all the bit. participants as well. Uh, I will share the feedback link in the WhatsApp group and I request all the participants to join tomorrow at 11 a.m. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone.